My studio is full of painting accessories and to be honest, I own a lot of gear that I almost never use. You know, the kind of stuff that's good to have just in case, but when you're in a situation to use it, you can't remember where you put it and you end up figuring out a way to do without it. I have a lot of accessories that I almost never use, but this one is different. I use it every day and I don't think I could paint without it, or at least, yeah, I'm sure I would find a way to paint without it. However, not having this tool would really make my life miserable and I would dearly miss it. This accessory is my trusty mole stick. If it's the first time you're hearing this word, you might be wondering what on earth is a mole stick? How is it even spelled? Actually, there are several ways to spell it. I've seen a little bit of everything. To explain it simply, because it is so simple, it's just a painting stick comes from the German Malen, which means to paint. And I'll explain the shape later and how you can make one after my design if you want. I'm not going to waste your time showing you a simple stick. I want to go a little bit deeper and help you understand how it can help you improve key passages of your paintings and overall make your process easier. Basically, this simple implement can help you be more precise and overall sharper in your paintings. What would I do without it? Without a mole stick, it's a lot harder to keep a steady wrist. It's possible, but at the end of the day, it's exhausting because you have to be very tense to avoid shaking. I usually paint eight hours a day minimum, so it's fine if the painting doesn't require a lot of accuracy and if I can loosen up, I don't need it. But as soon as I need to be sharper, I need to lock my arm and my wrist and without a mole stick, it's a very long day. So without a mole stick, how could I stabilize my wrist? Are there other options available? Of course, and the main option is to rest your hand on the canvas. That's generally what most beginners do when they move from drawing to painting because they are so used to lay down their hand on the paper. However, there are a lot of problems with this method. First of all, it's not always good to put your hand on the surface. It's messy, greasy, and it can get dirty. It's generally something to avoid even for drawing on paper. Second thing, a canvas can be wobbly and it's not even that steady. Third thing, it locks half of your hand because you rest on the side of the hand so you're very restricted in your movement. You're condemned to a pencil-like hold because only your fingers can really move. And one last thing, if the area below is covered with wet paint, you're screwed, so you have to work specifically with this method in mind, keeping areas empty and working exclusively from top to bottom. As you can see, laying your hand on the canvas seems to be the most obvious way to stabilize your arm, but it's not the ideal method by far. What other options do we have? An option I rarely use is the pinky hold, which consists in stabilizing the hand by putting the pinky on the canvas, sort of like a crutch for your hand. It kind of works, but after a few hours it really hurts. Plus, you don't always have a dry area to put your pinky just below where you want to paint, so it's not perfect. Another option, which is less common, is to hold your wrist with your forearm in sort of a, a sort of cross-like hold. It's very awkward. I personally never do that, but I've seen it used here and there. Not very often though. And there are probably other options to keep a steady hand, but none of those beat the mole stick. It's the best tool for this. It was used by the old masters and it's still the best option overall. Now, very quick, if you like my approach and want to learn more about oil painting, you can check out my course, The Practical Guide to Oil Painting. It doesn't just cover the art of painting in depth, but also talks about the practical details that are often forgotten. If you want to have a look, you'll find a link in the description. All right, let's go back to the video now. The mold stick has been used for centuries and you can see it used in multiple paintings of various eras. The traditional design has a soft leather pad at the end 
it can be filled with felt or cotton or whatever. Normally, you're supposed to rest the soft pad on the dry canvas, so make sure the paint is touch dry before pressing it against the paint. However, if you follow my design, which I'll be showing you in a minute, you won't need to worry about that, but more on that later. You can see other designs with the same idea of pressing it against the dry areas of the canvas. Some use a rubber pad at the end. When I was a student, I once improvised a mold stick with a big bowl of paper wrapped in masking tape. So really, no need to buy one ready-made. Whatever the price might be, it's probably too expensive for something this simple to make yourself. And to be fair, you can also only use a stick with no pad at the end as shown in these paintings. However, in this case, it will be impossible to press against the dry canvas because it could damage the surface in the painting. This requires to press on the outer edges of the painting, around the frame, on the easel or on the edge of the stretcher bars. I personally like this idea better actually. I never felt comfortable pressing a ball of leather on my painting, even when I'm sure that it's touch dry. I don't like it. It's annoying and you always have to be checking where you press the pad and if it's really touch dry. So I never went for this ball design. Instead, I chose to use the stick method, but I modified it at the end to help it rest on top of the stretcher bars, like this. So as you can see, I designed mine with some sort of hook shape, like this. And it's super simple, really. You take a wooden stick or plastic or metal, whatever you prefer. Wood feels better to me, honestly. So I had this stick uh, hanging around my house. It's kind of thick and I would prefer something with like a smaller girth, but for this video, this is the only one I had in my house available, so we'll use this. And as comparison, this is the one that I use more regularly. It's a lot thinner and it's, as you can see, it's painted black, uh, just for aesthetic reasons to be less disturbing in the videos. Here's how to do it yourself. Pre-drill and screw it just a simple flat metallic piece at the end. And then take a little piece of paper or fabric and shape it into a ball. Then you'll simply wrap it up with masking tape to shape it into the desired shape. It depends on the type of canvases or surfaces you normally use. You shape it however you like. You still have the ball shape on the other side if you want to press on the dry paint, but you can also put it on top of your canvas and do something else with your arm and your hands. You don't have to hold it all the time. Plus it's easy to hang when you're not using it. This design is so simple and practical and so effective. I don't know why people keep the traditional ball design. The only problem with this design is that if your painting is too big, it won't reach the top. In that case, just make a bigger one and it will just take 10 minutes max. Not I've made my my bigger mole stick, which is actually a mole pole, uh, which is really long for my, my huge canvases. Really handy, I use it almost all the time when I'm working on large canvases. So yeah, just as simple as this. Just use the size that you find is uh, adapted to the size of your canvases. That's it. Common problems you'll face with this design, it will eventually scratch the paint on the very edge on top this part of the painting is frankly not that important. Most of the time it's covered either by a frame or it's not even looked at or considered. However, I agree that it's not clean and the mold stick can also drag some wet paint along the edge and make it look very dirty. First of all, for the small damage on top, simply remember to fix it at the end of your painting session. And if you get paint on your hook and if it messes up everything, you can simply remove the masking tape, the old masking tape and wrap it up again to start over fresh. And that's it. It will eventually slide away if you're not careful, but that's not really a big deal. It's not really specific to this design. Anything can slide away if you're not careful. So how to use it and when? First of all, make sure to have it somewhere in your studio just in case, but remember that you don't always need it. It's here to help you paint sharper, but sometimes you'll find a way to do this without it and it's perfect this way. Good for you. 
The way I see it, it's like trying to put things on a top shelf that you can't barely reach. Sure, you can jump and, and put the box up there if you're lucky. But if you have to do this for an entire day, at some point, it's nice to have a step ladder. And I see the most kind of like the step ladder of painting. So when to use it then? See it in terms of resolution. Imagine that your painting has different levels of resolution in the same image. Some parts can be low resolution. They don't need intricate details and in sharp passages. They can be relatively blurry, very loose and painterly. Simply put, it doesn't make a huge difference if the brush stroke is here or a few millimeters right or left. It can be thicker or thinner. Nobody is going to even notice the subtlety. It simply flows well. And for this type of, uh, of painting, of low resolution painting, you're actually better off freehanding it. So don't use your mouse stick. It will look much better, more natural and spontaneous. On the other hand, some other parts of your painting need a high resolution. I'm thinking about passages for which people will notice a tiny difference of less than a millimeter. For example, the space between the eyes, the placement of the brush rogue has to be very precise in this case, or people will see that something is off. And this is what I call high resolution painting. It doesn't mean that you always need to paint with sharp edges and intricate details, simply that there is no room for error and that you need to really apply yourself. And this is where the mall stick is king. It will make your life so much easier if you're a tight painter, obviously, but if you're a loose painter, it's also a good idea to have one and make one because even though you'll probably use it less than a tight painter, it's always useful for passages where you really need to bring strong focus and it's ideal for portraits and just fine work in general. All right, that's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, remember to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Again, a huge thank you to my Patreon members. This video wouldn't be possible without your support. And if you want to join the community, you'll find a link in the description below. You'll also find the link to both my courses, my oil painting course and my color course. All right, that's it for today. As always, joy and inspiration to you, my friend. Bye.